Hello, my name is Sean B. Honick, and I'm the general manager here at Philips 66 for the digital strategy, architecture, and analytics teams. I also have responsibilities on our digital transformation program, including being the technical advisor for our migration from SAP's R3 to the new S4 HANA cloud implementation. The ERP project is entering its fourth year, and we expect to be completed by first quarter 23. In addition to the standard footprint most companies implement, we are co-developing a trade deal capture, risk and compliance, and renewables activities for Philips 66. We have one region live with the majority of the capabilities and are looking to complete the bulk of the remainder this year, the next year. I'm here with our senior solutions architect, Scott Bell from AWS, to talk about some of the hurdles and wins we were able to overcome in our journey to the cloud. Scott, do you want to say hello and introduce the agenda? Thank you, Sean. It's great to be with you today. My name is Scott Bell, and I am a senior solutions architect here at AWS and have the privilege of working with some of our largest customers as they migrate and build their business critical applications on AWS. Prior to joining Amazon, I have spent the last 20 years of my career as a customer leading teams in delivering ERP and other enterprise solutions to end users in over 150 countries around the world. Today, we will review Philips 66's ERP journey as they have modernized their business in running SAP on AWS. We'll also review how important the extended partnerships of AWS, SAP, SUSE, Intel, and Accenture have been to enable Philips 66's success. I'll provide detailed insights and best practices for operationalizing SAP at scale, and Sean will close out by sharing lessons learned through this journey. Sean, could you share with us a little more about your ERP journey? The vision for the ERP transformation is probably a lot like yours. We want to embrace standards, create an integrated solution, automate where we can, focus on the end-to-end -end value chain, enable analytics, of course, and, and try to create a, a flexibility to allow us to upgrade and embrace new functionality as it's available easily in the future. And through these marvelous ideals, transform the business to make it more agile, efficient, and smart. Those of you who have been around as long as I have know that there's, that's no small feat for a major system like SAP. SAP is still SAP in the cloud or on-prem. It's not like your shiny new greenfield cloud applications. It's still a very well integrated engineering marvel. So failovers in SAP are still a coordinated effort and probably should be thought of as, as disaster recovery rather than high availability. So when we started to experience some significant hardware outages last year, we became very nervous about the resiliency that we had come to know and implement in our own data centers. The cloud didn't have dual power supplies or mirrored memory or, or mirrored processors for that matter anymore. The failover is now a different availability zone. And SAP took five minutes to get there. That's too long for a flawless failover. So also unique to the cloud was that I no longer had direct access to all my vendors. AWS was now the conduit to work with the Intels, the Suzy's, and the rest. And fortunately, it was all in our best interest to do just that. I can't stress how important this is for SAP. You must create an ecosystem that includes your entire team. And the world gets pretty complicated pretty fast. And it's only through these partnerships that you will succeed in achieving your goals. So Scott will now walk you through some of our specific learnings and how that ecosystem was needed to solve some of these problems. Scott? Thank you, Sean. SAP and AWS have a relationship that dates back over a decade when SAP first became an AWS customer. Since then, we have partnered together to create many industry-leading breakthroughs and a continuous stream of co-innovation on behalf of SAP customers. For example, in 2012, we had hundreds of customers running SAP Suite on AnyDB. In 2016, we really saw the adoption take off when we released the X1 EC2 instances. These were the only HANA certified for two terabytes scale up and 15 terabytes scale out at the time. In 2017, we partnered with SAP to create the FAST program with SAP supported tools for migrations to AWS. We also began hosting the SAP Cloud Platform, where today we continue to have the most globally diverse and broadest service coverage. 
By 2018, we had thousands of customers running SAP on AWS. The most demanding customers pushed us to still go bigger. So we launched the X2 family of instances for 6, 9, 12, and, eight ter and 18 and 24 terabyte in-memory workloads. In 2019, we launched the only 100 terabyte BW4 HANA offering, followed by the only 48 terabyte S4 HANA offering. Both continue to be the only native cloud-enabled options available today. In addition to the co-innovation, we continue to see SAP rely on AWS to power other offerings. For example, most of the SAP cloud properties run on AWS, including SAP Cloud Platform, SuccessFactors, Concur, and Qualtrics. SAP NS2 uses the AWS GovCloud region, where we service both U.S. government agencies and other highly regulated industries. We continue to listen to AWS customers and create new offerings at a very aggressive pace, which mirrors the AWS pace of innovation. Within AWS, we have a dedicated service team for establishing best practices and innovating with SAP on AWS. With some of the challenges Sean described, we began partnering together to improve the stability and operating efficiencies for Philips 66. A few of these areas include partnering together to help develop and deliver the SAP Launch Wizard for SAP system provisioning. This service allows companies to be guided through the sizing, configuration, and deployment of SAP applications on AWS and follows all current best practices. This reduces the time it takes to set up a new SAP environment and allows the business to get started faster. Auto-scaling for SAP enables enterprises and SAP basis administrators to automatically detect SAP application server consumption based on SAP-specific workload metrics for dialogue, batch, on queue, and print work processes. This solution can adapt to spikes and dips for concurrent user logins, month-end close, payment runs, and a variety of both predictable and unpredictable workloads. Lastly, AWS Config is leveraged to assess, audit, and evaluate the consistent operating system and application level patching across your environment. Through leveraging this tool, customers can establish a baseline for your SAP instances and then ensure all instances remain in compliance with these baselines over time. I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into some, a few more specific areas of partnership and automation built together with Philips 66 and SAP. In the past, SAP customers had to use third-party software solutions to back up their HANA databases. With AWS Backend Agent for SAP HANA, you can back up your business-critical SAP HANA databases directly to Amazon S3. Backup is optimized to provide the best performance while keeping the load on your SAP HANA application under control. The agent is optimized to utilize the maximum elastic block storage throughput and network bandwidth available to Amazon S3 from your EC2 instance. This increases the speed at which your HANA database can be backed up or restored to and from Amazon S3, improving your recovery time objective. With the backup data stored in S3, the AWS backend agent also allows you to quickly build new SAP HANA database copies or refresh your existing SAP HANA database. With Amazon S3 storage, S3 cross-region replication, and other AWS compute and networking services, you can create disaster recovery architectures in order to quickly and easily recover your SAP HANA database from outages caused by natural disasters, system failures, and user error. Another challenge many SAP customers face is monitoring their SAP landscape from the AWS services up through the SAP application stack and business process performance. This architecture diagram shows the monitoring setup that can be deployed with a sample AWS CloudFormation template. The generated Amazon CloudWatch rule triggers a Java-based Lambda function every minute and performs multiple remote function calls to the SAP system through the official SAP JCO library. 
The SAP RFC credentials and connection information are stored securely inside AWS Secrets Manager and read on demand to establish connectivity. The Lambda function extracts the SAP application level metrics, adds the respective metadata, and publishes it to CloudWatch as a custom metric. Once in CloudWatch, these custom metrics can be aggregated with additional AWS operational metrics, such as EC2 instance, EBS volume, and network performance. Users can then create their own custom dashboards inside of CloudWatch to monitor the SAP ecosystem. Alarms can be generated and automated responses invoked when failures occur or anomalies are detected. As Philips 66 began to experience various system interruptions, they needed a way to automate and operationalize their response to these events. Historically, this would take the SAP basis team many hours of coordinated work to stabilize and restore systems. This process also introduced the possibility of human errors and process variation over time. We partnered together with Philips 66 and SAP to develop an automated process which monitored for interruption events. When an interruption or potential interruption is identified, it leverages AWS step functions in conjunction, in conjunction with a series of Lambda functions and AWS Systems Manager, which uses SAP controls to begin draining users from the impaired SAP application server, bringing up a new instance to replace the impacted node and gracefully shutting down the failed node. This automation has eliminated human errors and reduced system outage duration by up to 60%. In addition to system level interruptions, Philips 66 also needed to protect against any potential SAP cluster node networking interruptions. Each AWS region consists of multiple isolated and physically separate availability zones within a geographic area. Each availability zone is comprised of one or more discrete data centers with redundant power, networking, and connectivity in an AWS region. All availability zones within an AWS region are interconnected with high bandwidth, low latency networking over fully redundant dedicated Metro fiber. This resilient network provides high throughput, low latency networking between availability zones for applications like SAP. For highly sensitive SAP HANA clusters, there can be a rare occurrence when the cluster nodes are successfully sending replication traffic through the primary elastic network interface and the CoroSync Elastic Network Interface may be temporarily interrupted, or vice versa. This can create a split-brain scenario where the primary and secondary HANA nodes both self-promote to become the primary node in the cluster. In order to avoid this split-brain possibility, we worked with SUSE to implement an additional CoroSync ring for each cluster. This additional Elastic Network Interface associated with each EC2 instance will traverse a physically distinct path between availability zones to ensure that the primary node has truly failed before switching over to the standby node. With these changes, Philips 66 eliminated outages and downtime associated with transient network interruptions. One additional way to protect against end user impacting failures is to ensure that all of the EC2 instances supporting your SAP environment do not reside on the same physical rack within an availability zone. For SAP, this means having multiple application servers leverage EC2 spread placement groups, which strictly places a small group of instances across distinct underlying hardware to reduce correlated failures. Spread placement groups are recommended for applications like SAP that have a small number of critical instances that should be kept separate from each other. Launching instances in a spread placement group reduces the risk of simultaneous failures that might occur when instances share the same racks. Through implementing this capability, Philips 66 has reduced their overall application, SAP application server downtime due to correlated hardware events impacting multiple application servers at the same time. Lastly, I wanted to share a pattern developed in conjunction with the SAP Professional Services team 
supporting Philips 66. Many customers like Philips 66 has a, have a standby HANA system in a secondary availability zone, which remains idle most of the time. They also have significant reporting in other read-only traffic, which queries the primary HANA instance. In order to leverage the idle resources, SAP and AWS support distributed read queries to the secondary node. As depicted here, reporting and analytical clients still query the primary HANA node. However, with the operation mode change to log replay read access, the primary HANA node will forward read-only requests to the secondary HANA node. The secondary HANA node then responds to the requests, alleviating additional query burden from the primary node. Through this improvement, Philips 66 has been able to achieve improved reporting performance and no longer needs to spin up larger instances in support of month-end business cycles. Sean, would you mind sharing with us some of your lessons learned over the past year? So to summarize, some of our key learnings are listed here. You must embrace strong relationships with your vendors and partners. You don't control the environment anymore. And applications and operations are even more integrated. We saw jobs that would bring down our NetApps and vice versa. So it's important to have a single pane that allows you to detect, to detect basically who done it. And finally, move from a very reactive batch mode to proactively watch characteristics of failure and assume those patterns will again manifest themselves and work to prevent those outages. So this idea of self-awareness and healing are key to creating and maintaining a truly robust and resilient system. So thank you for your time today. This session will be available in the coming days through the reInvent website. Feel free to reach out to Scott or myself for any questions and suggestions you may have for us. We look forward to learning more together here at reInvent.